Hey, what's up guys? Kalamazi here, and over the course of the last few weeks I've gotten more and more questions pertaining to what spec am I going to be leveling as in Battle for Azeroth? What talents am I going to be using for that spec, and more importantly what PvP talents do I think are best? What gear am I going to be using, what route am I going to be taking, and what are my actual thoughts on war mode from leveling from 110 to 120? With there only being three days until Battle for Azeroth's worldwide release, I figured now would be a great time to briefly go over what I think are the best talents and gear for both leveling as Affliction and Destruction. I will also be going over what I feel is the best route for leveling as both Alliance and Horde, as well as giving my thoughts on War Mode from 110 to 120, so let's jump right into that. If I had chosen to level as Affliction in BFA, these are the talents I would actually run for it. I think the Death Bolt is your best choice in the level 15 row out of the three options that we actually have, and Absolute Corruption is hands down the best choice in the level 30 row for leveling out of Wrath and Agony, Absolute Corruption, and Siphon Life. The extra GCD that you have to use for Siphon Life, even with the life gain being uh, I guess accounted for, is not worth it in my opinion, and having Absolute Corruption in conjunction with Sacrilegious Dark Strike is going to be exceptionally powerful for leveling. Burning Rush is my go-to choice in the 45 row, running faster, faster leveling, gotta go fast, makes sense, pretty straightforward. In the level 60 row, unfortunately, instead of the Siege, is not really going to do much for you for leveling. Vile Tank is a nice option to have with the permanent, with the, I guess the sort of slow the movement speed reduction, but you're also going to be wearing Sacrilegious Dark Strike with Absolute Corruption, so that's not really much of a concern. Phantom Singularity is going to provide a good bit of AoE on packs that you pull that consists of 4 or 5 or more mobs, while also healing you for a little bit, and that's always really nice to have around. One thing I want to make note of as well in the level 75 row is that while Shadow Fury does proc Sefu Secret, Mortal Coil does as well, and also heals you for a little bit while also being really nice to actually have around in PvP if you're using War Mode for leveling from 110 to 120. Demonic Circle is not really going to see much of any use at all while leveling because of the fact we're just moving so much while leveling. In the level 90 row, I think you have a choice between Haunt or Grimoire of Sacrifice. Um, Haunt's going to be a little better for actually like helping you kill large, rush, large mobs, large health mobs, rare mobs, or things of the sort. Grimoire of Sacrifice can be a little nicer for having the Absolute Corruption, just tab and run build where things are permanently slowed. And it's really just going to come down to player preference. I could see running Grimoire of Sacrifice in the earlier levels while you might not need your pet out as much and swapping the Haunt at later levels when mobs have more health and are hitting harder and things of the sort. In the level 100 row, we really have the choice between Creeping Death and Dark Soul Misery. I'm not a big fan of Soul Conduit, and I don't think, outside of like rare mobs and high health quest mobs, we're going to be casting a whole lot of unstable afflictions while leveling early on. In Creeping Death, that makes all your dots take 15% faster, which means mobs are technically dying about 15% faster. So this is just going to be the go-to choice in this row for myself as well. Now taking a look at Affliction's actual PvP talents, in the first row here I've taken Gladiator's Medallion like mostly everybody has. In the second, third, and fourth row here we have some options, but I will admit that they're not as powerful or as impactful as Destructions are. The one I've taken here in the second row is Curse of Frailty. It's an instant cast with a 45 second cooldown. It says it reduces the target's maximum health by up to 15% for 10 seconds. It's nice to have around for world PvP, especially if you're leveling with war mode on, or it has some other applications as well, but it's not super impactful. It's not really what I want to be taking as like my level 2 talent when it comes to the PvP. The second one we have here is Rotten Decay, and it's a passive. It says each time your drain life deals damage, it increases the duration of your unstable affliction, corruption, and agony on the target by one second. Now we're not going to be casting drain life a whole lot, but we will be, you know, from time to time using it to either heal up from mobs or having burning rush on, or using it on like whether it be rare mobs or high health mobs in general, and being able to extend the duration of your dots is always nice. It helps with maintenance of dots as well as just leveling and things in general. Now, like I said, in the, level, in the fourth row here, Affliction doesn't have as many solid choices as like Destruction does. You have a few options here for your third choice. I would say it's probably between Nether Ward, Soul Shatter, and this Affliction. Nether Ward is an instant with a 45 second cooldown. It says it surrounds the caster with a shield that lasts for 3 seconds, reflecting all harmful spells cast onto you. This is going to be especially useful in World PvP if you're jumped by leveling with War Mode. But it's a bit more of a defensive talent that I'd like to have around, uh, I guess when looking at like Destruction's talents or even just certain other things in general which are more offensive, Nether War is pretty much a, just a solely a passive or def defensive talent, I'm sorry. Soul Shatter is another option we have here, it's an instant on a 1 minute cooldown. It consumes all the damage over time effects on the nearest 5 enemies within 40 yards, dealing up to 10% of their maximum health and shadow damage. And for each enemy hit by Soul Shatter, you gain 1 Soul Shard and 10% haste for 8 seconds. This is nice to have around, and it's a relatively powerful effect. You know, so Seed of Corruption and so the Seeds have been nerfed AoE damage wise, and while the vast majority of our mobs are going to be dying from our dots just taking while they're chasing us anyways when we're wearing Sacrilegious Dark Strike, 
Soul Shatter is nice to have around when certain spots we have to AoE a lot of mo like mobs down pretty quickly. Endless Affliction is our other option here, I would say. It's a passive and says your Unstable Affliction deals the same damage as normal, but its duration is increased by 6 seconds. Now the main application that I can see here is when you're looking at actual Unstable Affliction now, Malefic Grasp is effectively built into it, right? It says your damage, or you deal 10% increased damage to targets affected by your Unstable Affliction. Now what I'm thinking here though, if you're running the Absolute Corruption, Sacrilegious Dark Strike build, you're mainly going to be uh, just tab targeting Agony to a bunch of mobs, to casting a, a Seed of Corruption, and then once Corruption is applied to all of them, they're basically going to be chasing you around, not even reaching you when they die. You aren't going to be casting Unstable Affliction as much as you would think when it comes to leveling. You know, there are going to be times like with the rare mobs or high health mobs that you will, but overall, I would say for my fourth talent here, it's probably just going to end up being Soul Shatter. I think Curse of Weakness, Curse of Tongues, uh, Gateway Master, Curse of Shadows, Essence Drain, and Casting Circle are just, are just too weak and really not very impactful. Um, I mean, if you are encountering a lot of world PvP or leveling after the initial BFA rush for leveling like a week or a few weeks later or so, Nether Warp might be a better choice here than Endless Affliction and Soul Shatter because it offers a good bit more defensiveness. And you know, Endless Affliction and Soul Shatter don't really offer a whole lot when it comes to offensive power regardless. But I would say here my choice is probably going to end up being Soul Shatter or Endless Affliction in this row, probably leaning a bit more towards Soul Shatter in the end for Affliction's PvP talents. Now as far as destruction leveling talents go from 110 to 120, my choice is going to be Flash Over, Shadow Burn, Burning Rush, Cataclysm, Mortal Coil, Roaring Blaze, and Channel Demon Fire. Flash Over I feel is just going to be the best choice in the level 15 row, while giving Conflagrate 25% increase in additional damage, as well as an additional charge of Backdraft is exceptionally powerful. I have seen some people saying that Eradication is going to be the go-through choice in the 15 row, while either using the Class Ring or just their base talent in general. But I feel that Eradication is sort of a trap when it comes to early leveling, and potentially even mid to later leveling as well. Leveling as Destruction, if you're relatively geared on live servers right now, I come to find that a whole lot of the time the mobs are getting one shot or two shot, and to the point where once you cast your Chaos Bolt and your Eradication debuff for Windows actually up on the target, they either don't live much longer, like pass another Conflagrate hit, or actually die an overkill from the actual Chaos Bolt you cast, so it's effectively like almost a wasted talent or a wasted legendary slot if you're wearing Soul of the Lord for leveling as Destruction. In level 30 row, like I said, I think Shadow Burn is just going to be the best choice here. It generates soul shard fragments as well as being very useful with havoc on multiple targets. Reverse entropy is nice as well for the 15% haste, but it's not a 100% chance to proc. And internal combustion is more of a PvP based talent. I feel even if you're using war mode or not, I feel like shadow burn is going to be your best choice here. In level 45 row, we have burning rush again, moving faster, leveling faster. Basically, my only choice here. There is an argument for demon skin here, but I feel like burning rush is still going to be your best choice. In the level 60 row, I initially leveled with Fire and Brimstone, however when I leveled again on beta, I found that Cataclysm was much better. Cataclysm is basically the only talent I actually have in this row for max level, like Mythic Plus and Raids and things of the sort. And being both a single target DPS gain as well as a multi-target DPS gain and allowing the Cataclysm in the channel Demon Fire sequencing is really nice for leveling, as well as just most content in general. In the level 75 row, we have the choice of Dark Fury. Mortal Coil or Demonic Circle, and it's basically the same way it is with Affliction. Mortal Coil will proc uh, Sephu's Secret, which we're going to be wearing for leveling. Shadow Fury will as well, but Mortal Coil is really nice to have around for PvP and War Mode as well, if you have that enabled, with the 3 second fear and healing you for 20% of your maximum health is really nice. In the level 90 row, I think you can make a bit more of a case for either Roaring Blaze or Grimoire of Sacrifice. In my opinion, using Grimoire of Sacrifice at earlier levels is probably fine, honestly, where you're going to be using it in general if you're going to use it at all. But, you know, around like level 115 or especially 116 when legendaries become inactive and later on, like I said, 118 or 119, mobs do hit a good bit harder. So I could very easily see myself and people, if I end up choosing to run Destruction, running Grimoire Sacrifice in the earlier levels and swapping to Roaring Blaze at later levels. In the level 100 row, they're basically the only real choice we have here between Channel Demon Fire or Soul Conduit. I think Dark Soul instability is nice, but having it for leveling on a 2 minute cooldown is not as impactful as I would like it to be. Soul Combat is okay, I'm not as big of a fan of it, you know, Affliction as I am Destruction, but I think our Shard Generation is pretty strong, especially with using Shadow Burn, and the, like, just a whole lot of the mobs actually dying quickly when they're not using too many shards for leveling. And Channel Demon Fire is really nice for large AoE pulls, as well as single target or two target pulls as well, so it's going to be my go-to choice in level 100 row for leveling. Now looking at the actual PvP talents we have for Destruction, compared to Affliction and Demonology, I would say that Destruction has the most powerful PvP talents for leveling in general. 
I'm using the Gladiator's Medallion in the first row, like the vast majority of everybody else is. When it comes to rows 2, 3, and 4, the first talent I've chosen here is Entrenched in Flame. It's a passive, and since they can flagrate, roots the enemy target for 3 seconds, and its effect does not break from damage. Now, depending on if you're using Grimoire of Sacrifice or Roaring Blaze for initial leveling, you might have your Voidwalker out if you're using Roaring Blaze, and if that's the case, you're not really going to have to deal with mobs hitting you or chasing you around anyways. But if you've chosen to use Grimoire of Sacrifice, the root is going to be nice. It's honestly going to be nice to have around in general regardless. Cremation is the second talent that I've chosen here. It says Conflagrate deals up to an additional 3% of a target's maximum health and fire damage if your target is affected by your Immolate. Obviously, Immolate and Conflagrate are main spells on actual rotation, so it's going to be up to a 3% additional damage dealt or so when using Conflagrate with targets that actually have Immolate on them. So it's nice to have around. It's a nice passive to have as well. Now, in the, I guess the fourth slot here, I've chosen Bane of Havoc. Bane of Havoc is on a 45 second cooldown with a 40 yard range. It's the instant cast and actually replaces actual Havoc. It says it curses the ground with a demonic bane, causing all of your single target spells to also strike targets marked with the bane at last 10 seconds. As you can see here, the icon for Havoc has actually changed to the Bane of Havoc mark, and instead of it flying from one target to another, it actually gives you a large circle here, and you can basically drop it and apply it, and it will apply to certain targets here. As you can see, I dropped it here, it applied to the Re Rebellious Wrath Guard, and now it has the Bane of Havoc debuff on it versus actual Havoc in general. Now, one thing I do want to mention here is that there are a few other options when it comes to actual PvP talents you can choose here. Curse of Frailty is one of them. It reduces the target's maximum health up to 15% for 10 seconds. It's one of, the one of the actual, I guess, talents we chose for Affliction. Partially because Affliction's talents aren't as good as Destruction's, but regardless, it is an option if you're looking to take that. Fell Fisher's another one. It's another passive. It says, Chaos Bolt creates a 5-yard wide eruption of Fell Fire under the target, reducing movement speed by 50% and reducing all healing received by 25% on all enemies within the Fissure in the last 6 seconds. It's a nice passive to have around, but I feel like you're going to get more use out of actual the three I have here compared to taking Fell Fisher or Curse of Frailty. And the main PvP talent debate we've had and seen amongst a lot of people is Bane of Havoc versus Focus Chaos. Focus Chaos is a passive and says Chaos, Bolt, the, Chaos Bolt's damage is increased by 65%, but no longer strikes additional targets afflicted by Havoc. So basically, you can't take Bane of Havoc and Focus Chaos together because they don't work together. Now, one of the things I found when leveling, obviously, is that Havoc is a main part of our actual, I guess you could say, rotation leveling kit, regardless if you're using Bane of Havoc or just Havoc in general. And having Chaos Bolt removed from that is pretty big. And especially for early leveling, I'm going to be using Bane of Havoc if we're actually pulling three, four, five mobs, or just a lot of mobs in general, you know, not having to actually, you know, t target one mob, press Havoc, tab target another, versus dropping a huge Bane of Havoc circle, it's going to be nice and speed up leveling a little bit. I think Focus Chaos could be swapped to at later levels, like 117, 118, when mobs start hitting a bit harder, depending on how geared you are on live servers and heading into BFA leveling. But I feel overall that you're going to want to start off with Bane of Havoc and just really work through and see actually if you want to swap the Focus Chaos versus Bane of Havoc at later levels. Now, one thing that's really important when it comes to destruction, and I'm going to get to destruction's gearing in a bit here as well, is Entrenched in Flames interaction with Sephiroth's Secret. Conflagrate roots the enemy target for 3 seconds. Its effect does not break from damage, right? If you look here, we're wearing Sefu's Secret and Odir currently. Sefu's Secret says, you know, it's on a 30 second internal cooldown. Interrupting an enemy, um, lost control effects, things of a sort, gives 70% increased movement speed and 25% haste for 10 seconds. So we're targeting this Rebellious Wrath Guard here, and if we hit Conflagrate, it procs Sefu's Secret. And it's procking off of our Entrenched in Flame PvP talent. This obviously gives us 60% haste and 23% movement speed, I'm sorry. 60%... Oh, golly, 60% movement speed and 23% haste, I'm sorry. Um, it's going to be... It's actually interesting because it says 70% increased movement speed here and 25% haste. I guess it got scaled down a bit with the stats question. Everything sort of threw me off there. Sorry. But regardless, this is going to be exceptionally powerful for leveling. Like, the fact that we don't actually have to cast Shadow Fury or wait for Mortal Coil to come off a CD and cast it every time, the proc stuff is going to be huge. Having that additional movement speed is going to be massive, and Conflagrate is built into our normal rotation, our normal leveling. And, and to be honest, we use it probably, I would say, for just chain pulling every 30 to 45 seconds. So having that passive, I guess you could say sort of passive movement speed and proc built into Zephyr's Secret, or into Conflagrate, basically giving yourself like a mini heroism every 30 to 45 seconds, it's going to be huge for leveling. And in my opinion, makes Entrenched in Flames the number one PvP talent, or talent that you want for leveling in Battle for Azeroth.
Now, as far as gearing goes for both Affliction and Destruction heading into Battle for Azeroth leveling, I wanted to mention first that, you know, while there, I am going to be wearing certain tier pieces, when it comes to both Affliction and honestly Destruction in a sense too, both your two piece and your four piece from Antorus are not nearly as relevant as they are actual, in actual raiding content right now. The other two piece, when Agony deals damage, there's an 8% chance to increase the duration of a stable affliction by 2 seconds. And our four piece, when you cast a stable affliction or a seed of corruption, all targets take 50% increased damage from all your dots basically for 8 seconds. They're really not going to be leveling on, or relevant when it comes to leveling almost honestly at all. So if you have higher island level pieces, like as you see I'm only wearing one piece here for my tier because I only have one helm. If you have higher item of pieces like this over other tier pieces, these legs I have are 255 versus my tier legs being 250, you're honestly going to want to just be wearing your highest item level pieces. It's going to be a bit more impactful, it's going to give you a bit more secondary stats as well as primary stats for leveling as well as a, a larger health pool which is going to be really powerful. Now when it comes to leveling for actual legendaries for Affliction, I've chosen Sefu Secret and Sacred Lash's Dark Strike. As I mentioned before, Sacred Lash's Dark Strike in conjunction with Absolute Corruption is going to be really powerful. Corruption deals 15% increased damage and slows enemy movement speed by 60%. Obviously with Absolute Corruption, Corruption is permanent. And with Absolute Corruption also giving 15% increased damage to Corruption, you're dealing 30% increased damage with your Corruption while also permanently slowing the mobs. Effectively allowing you to either just cast Agony in a bunch of mobs, see to Corruption them, and AWE them down, or just tab target Corruption, maybe another dot while they're chasing around. They're really not even going to touch you, which can be especially powerful with Grimoire Sacrifice if you don't want to use a pet for initial leveling. Sefu Secret is also nice. The passive 10% movement speed and 2% haste is great. It is procable off of Fear, Shadow Fury, and Mortal Coil, which is going to be especially powerful for leveling. I think a lot of people really overlook movement speed, like passive movement speed increases. And having Sefu Secret around for it is going to be especially powerful for leveling as Affliction. As far as trinkets go, the prototype personnel decimator is still really powerful and overtuned, I would say, and nothing has really changed from it being overpowered or uh, overtuned in the last few weeks. This is going to be my first trinket I actually level with. Um, I have an Acre Catalyst Injector with 29% with 29 Leech on it, and I also have the option of running an Unstable Arcana Crystal, but I do have Leech on my Acre Catalyst Injector, so I feel like this is going to be the way to go, but you're really going to want to look for either stat sticks unless you have an Unstable, or sorry, an, a Prototype Personnel Decimator, so that's going to be your best bet for leveling, just basic stat sticks. Now as far as destruction gearing goes, I have chosen to keep on my actual two piece for leveling with Chaos Bolt increasing the critical strike chance of incinerate on the target by 40% for 8 seconds, mainly due to the fact that I only have one helm outside of my actual Hood of Eternal Disdain, being my 250 socketed tier helm that I got week one of Heroic. Uh, and the gloves I have are 260 versus my tier being 255, so I'm really only losing 5 item levels there, and the two piece bonus in my opinion is worth it, worth a 5 item level loss on my gloves only. Um, when it comes to actual four piece, I have much better legs, much better shoulders, and a cloak that I'm wearing instead, so we're gonna forego the four piece. That being said, the legendaries that I'm wearing for destruction leveling are going to consist of either Sefu Secret, it's going to consist of Sefu Secret, and then either Odir, or we're gonna end up using uh, Ferritory of Souls. Now my initial plan was to actually just use Ferritory of Souls for leveling for the additional shard generation until earlier today when it was mentioned by another Warlock and Guild that Odir is actually another option, and with Bane of Havoc, Odir is going to be exceptionally powerful. Uh, the equip is enemies marked by your Havoc take 15% increased damage from your single target spells. And I think it's going to be exceptionally powerful for leveling, even if you're not using Bane of Havoc. I think having the actual 15% increased damage taken from Havoc is going to be really big, especially with the nerfs it's seen over the course of beta a few times. Um, set through Secret once again. The 10% uh, passive movement speed and 2% haste is going to be nice. And like I mentioned before, the fact that our PvP talent, Entrenched in Flames, actually procs uh, Sefu Secret almost on cooldown with using Conflagrate in our normal leveling rotation is going to be exceptionally powerful and this is the main edge I think Destruction has over Affliction for leveling when heading into BFA. Affliction is going to be a little bit slower when it comes to leveling as dots are going to take longer to kill mobs but you're able to effectively just run dot run dot run versus Destruction has to sort of stand still but Destruction's power level is so high when it comes to initial leveling and even 115, 116 leveling and higher on, or later on level wise, you're still hitting really hard where Affliction takes a little bit longer at that point to actually kill mobs. So with that being said, you know, when comparing Affliction to Destruction for leveling, my choice is going to be Destruction. I feel it's just suited best for leveling when it comes to damage, uh, toolkit wise. And I really think the thing that actually pulled it ahead of Affliction for me it's the interaction with Entrenched in Flames and Sefu Secret. Having the actual like proc of Sefu Secret going off every 30 to 45 seconds with uh, Conflagrate, it's going to be so powerful for leveling. You're going to be able to just fly through questing so much quicker, and the best majority of the time, 
you're probably not even gonna actually notice the speed buff, but it's gonna get you through questing so much quicker and be able to blast through zones. And the main thing is going to actually be able to get ahead of the initial pack at 110, depending on whatever zone you actually choose to start in. I'm going to be wearing the same trinkets as I was for Affliction, Prototype, Personnel Decimator, and my Acro Catalyst Injector, mainly because it has Leech on it, as well as a few other pieces in my gear do also. Another great option is your Unstable Arcana Crystal. Just statistics in general, if you don't have Macro Catalyst Injector or a Prototype Personnel Decimator, statistics are going to be your best bet moving forward heading into leveling for Battle for Azeroth for Destruction as well. Now as far as leveling goes for my Horde Warlock, I have made my chosen route based off of Alpha and Beta leveling and feel that it would be the best for me. I do want to say that there's no real correct zone to start in versus another, I'm just simply aiming for what I feel would be the fastest for myself. With that being said, the first zone that I have chosen to start in is Voldoon. I feel that it is the overall most challenging zone to level in due to there being a large amount of heavily concentrated mobs. There are also a few areas in the zone that I feel are some of the most difficult to quest through out of all three available starting zones. Due to the fact that we are much more powerful stat wise at 110 and legendaries will still be functional, my plan is to blast through Voldoon as quickly as possible. The second zone that I have chosen is Zuldazar for a few reasons. Choosing Zuldazar second puts us closer to both the war campaign area as well as the mission table. The zone is also a decent bit harder to actually traverse than Nazmir due to its high mountainous terrain in certain parts, which makes you want to also get Zuldazar done second so that the final zone is the fastest and easiest to actually navigate through. With two of the three zones being complete at this point, it only leaves Nazmir as my final zone of choice. I found Nazmir to be the easiest zone to traverse on beta as well as the easiest to actually level in due to the nature and damage the mobs were actually dealing to me, which was less than both Voldoon and Zuldazar. Saving Nazmir for last is a good choice due to the fact that past 116, legendaries are no longer working and our stats will be much lower than they currently are at 110. Now as far as alliance leveling goes, I want to preface this by saying that the only actual alliance zone I leveled in was Drusfar. With that being said, and from what I've seen recommended by most, the route I will be taking is Drusfar first, Tearguard Sound second, and Stormsong Valley third. I know personally that Drusfar has a great deal of hard hitting mobs, so once again having active legendaries would be very useful. It was also hands down my favorite zone out of all the ones I leveled in, so I definitely want to be starting there. From what I've heard and seen, Tearguard Sound is the next zone that's recommended. I've also seen it mentioned countless times that having a water strider is very important for said zone as there is a tremendous amount of water present. Having a few laystone buoys around will also help you reach the surface of the water quickly after you finish those annoying underwater quests. Stormsong Valley is a zone that I chose to save for last just due to the sheer size of the zone also being the zone with the longest quest line. I plan on leveling my alliance character after my horde one as well so this gives me a bit more time to actually see most of the zone and experience the full quest line. Now as far as my actual thoughts on leveling with war mode for the additional 10% experience, I do think that it's worth it initially and it's something that I will be using on launch. While you will encounter opposing faction members while on your war campaign questline, you will not see nearly as many opposing faction players as you will in the days following BFA's launch while leveling in your faction specific zones. If for some reason you do actually encounter a good bit of resistance while leveling, the cloaks that are sold by the guild vendor in Orgrimmar or Stormwind will allow you to teleport back to your main city on a 2, 4, and 8 hour cooldown. Once you do so, simply turn off war mode and take the portal back to your faction's corresponding leveling zone, which is very close to where you actually teleported in. I have not yet decided if I will be running with war mode on while leveling my second character, as many opposing faction players will then be 120 and I'm sure the griefing will have already begun by then. I think at that point it would just be something that you probably have to play by ear. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this did a good job of answering most of the questions you've all had recently about my leveling plans in Battle for Azeroth. There are also a few items I would recommend most everyone have for leveling as they make certain tasks and obstacles much easier to actually tackle. I have a link to my video covering those items in the description below. I will also be streaming the entire leveling, gearing, and raid preparation process for my Warlock heading into BFA once it actually launches, so I'll have a link to that in the description below as well. If you guys have any questions, suggestions, or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you want to see more WoW and BFA content, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons as your support really helps. Thanks so much for all the support guys, and I'll see y'all in less than 72 hours in Battle for Azeroth. Peace.